those. Can I tell you, by the way, I didn't realize that New York Times connections had taken over the world. I knew that it was somewhat popular because it's in the New York Times. And I knew that it was um, somewhat popular because it gets every day on Twitter. There's people complaining about connections. You know, bassinet clairvoyant or whatever how could somebody possibly get that this was musical instruments at the start of the that's the game bro but i don't understand blue could be in two categories that's the game that's the game that's why you gotta that's a it's a puzzle otherwise it wouldn't make it it, it wouldn't be difficult you would just be like chicken beef lamb goat Meats, like that shit would be too easy, brother. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Where I really realized that Connections was super popular, my nine-year-old niece was using her mom's iPhone and there was an app that served up endless Connections. Now, it wasn't um, New York Times affiliated, but like it was like an endless scroll of Connections puzzles and she was fighting for her life and I was knocking them out easy to be fair she's nine years old which means she was born in 2005 sorry no i'm fucking old 2015 one of the one of the connections was catfish jackass cribs and something else and i was like oh those are all old shows on mtv and she was like how am i supposed to know that and i was like you got me there <laughs> You're fucking nine years old. I don't know how you could be expected to know that. Maybe they got to make a connections for little kids or something like that. Because we lateral think in this bitch. Anyway. Today's puzzle in Poke Doku. We're back. I did see, by, I know we, we have, we're like half an hour in. We haven't talked about anything and yet we've talked about everything. I did see the bricks at the Granville Island crossing. I think it's smart. That's a crazy intersect. There's lots of like horrible pedestrian intersections in Vancouver. Vision Zero Vancouver is a, an advocacy group to try to bring awareness to pedestrian safety on the roads. So they do uh, their publicity stunts, but I don't mean it in a negative way. They uh, installed some foam bricks at a pedestrian crossing and said, if you want cars to pay attention to you when you cross and stop blowing through the crosswalk, grab a brick and walk across the road. I think that's, that's very smart. They're, yes, they're foam. I mean, they're, it's accomplishing the same thing. If they were real bricks, it's, you know, I, I think it's fine as long as nobody's chucking them for no reason, but sometimes you never know in this city. <laughs> Okay. Ferry electric. Borderline impossible. Ferry Kanto. That's the first region. Clefairy. If Clefairy isn't a fairy Pokemon, we never play this game ever again. Fairy monotype. Easy. Clefable. Easiest game of my life. Fighting Kanto. Primeape. Yeah, you thought I was going to go Machop on that, huh? No, no, no. I can name a couple of fighting types. Fighting Monotype. Hmm, Hitmon Lee. No, Hitmon Chan. Okay. Kanto G Max form. Easy. Charizard Mega Y. What? Charizard is from Kanto. And it's his G Max. Oh, do I have to? Is is it not? It's Mega and G Max are two different things. Charizard G Max. No. Oh. Okay. Fighting Electric. Okay, we're fucked. I I do know there is a Pikachu G Max, so we go Pikachu G Max without a doubt. And then Monotype. <coughs> pardon me, G Max form. Blastoise Gmax. Oh, would you look at that? Fighting Electric. Um, the the second to last boss from Elden Ring. Fairy Electric. It can't be done. It actually just it can't be done. 
Unless, may, just, just maybe this Togekiss has like a lightning attack. Okay, it was worth a try, I thought. It's not that, what do we get, seven on that one? That's pretty good. So, okay, you're right. Third last boss. Third last boss. My mistake. I was talking about Horo Luke's. Doesn't he have like a, he's, he's fighting type, that's for sure. Togekiss does learn electric moves. I knew it. Now, did, did Denny, did Denny, I see this creature in Pokemon Go from time to time. You know what I say? I swipe right. That's not Pikachu. Or is this, which, which one is the one where you're getting rejected? That's the direction I'm swiping on Dedene because I simply don't care. Honestly, I'm, okay, that's why that's left. I'm swiping left on almost every Pokemon unless I see that that motherfucker is a Galarian legendary bird. Now, I have a Galarian Articuno, which I'm pretty stoked about, but I had to use my Master Ball to get it. And then I didn't get the second Master Ball from the quest because my ass was not doing 60 raids in 60 days. I'm, I'm not Papa John's, okay? It's just not going to happen. Hello, Jay, by the way. You want to talk about speaking a different language? How about uh, you playing Blood Bowl 3 on stream last night? I was trying to crunch the numbers, figure out what's going on. The right guard is about to send a pancake block. You roll dice. They've done a, 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 a shiver around the pancake block, and now they roll for initiative to see if they could take out the quarterback. I do love games like that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just flipping the script on you. Tapu Coco. Iron Hands. They, st they really stopped trying. I created that game. You know what? I looked at the art and I said, I'm pretty sure Jay made this. It, had, it was either Jay or whoever did the art for Tape to Tape. I was like, the, the, the style is emblematic. Iron Hands. Gengar G-Max kind of funny. Okay, Tomo, I, you, need to, you need to get off the, the table, man. It's too much. He's doing too much. You're doing, you're doing too much, buddy. You're doing too much. Okay. <laughs> he is going G-Max mode. How the hell do you stream, man? Now. This looks like a movie made in the 2000s that takes place in the 1970s. I think this is Pearl. Doesn't exist. Okay. This is um, Inherent Vice. This is Licorice Pizza. Licorice Pizza. Am I spelling licorice right? Inherent Vice. No. <clears throat> this tells me nothing. Unless maybe, no, they, they didn't have this kind of, unless that's paint. I don't know why, I'm, I'm, I've watched too much Netflix in my life. I was seeing this as like a transition that goes across the screen. Or you know, like they start it up and the, the, the scene starts and it says like sunset star lanes and then it pans out as if it was like a physical element actually in the frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, they didn't have that shit in 1971. She stole my prescription. She took my whole flow! Lens for lens, frame for frame! You're telling me this shit is not licorice pizza. Oh, it's um, Reddit. It's Reddit, the nice guys. See this, if you really wanna be an environmentalist, this is the way you have to act. You combine your bath and your laundry Bonus, you only got to choose one kind of soap. You're using half as much soap, probably like 10% the amount of water that you would use. And you, you're going to get on my case because I forgot my reusable bags one time. Don't even get me started, man. Nobody's on your case? Yeah, but if they were, I'm... Come and prepare. <laughs> I 
I'm ready. After backing up Steve Slayton and Ryan Motes as a rookie, this second-year Texas RB had a massive breakout year in 2010. You know what's crazy? 1,600 rushing yards and 16 touchdowns literally only took him 16 plays. First running back in history to have 16 consecutive 100-yard touchdown rushes. It was a big season for Andre Johnson. Probably, now that I think about it, think he might have been a wide receiver. That's a wide receiver. He was good though, right? That's Ar Arian Foster. Okay, my mistake. He was, he was a goat. Okay, we take those. Totaling over 9,700 yards and 87 passing TDs, Chad Henney was a four-year starter at this Big Ten school. The Big Ten is the Midwest. 04 to 07, my man was ripping it up for Notre Dame, without a doubt. Okay, absolutely no idea. Michigan University. Dan Pilds? Dan, Michigan might be Dan's most hated university because he's a... a, a Michigan State Spartan. Former MLB player Skip Shoemaker has been the manager of this National League East team for fucking like a year and a half. Okay, cool. National League East. NL East. That's easy, bro. Um, the fucking Miami Marlins. Oh! Let's go. Thank you, Toronto Blue Jays, for being in the AL East, so I know every single team in the AL East. And therefore, it had to be a team on the East Coast that was not in the AL East. Hoover, Decatur, Dothan, Alabaster, and Prattville, they're all in Illinois. Excuse me? It's Georgia? <laughs> Sufian Stevens lied to me? I thought they saw the lion and the kangaroo take her down to the river where they caught a wild alligator, bro. What the fuck? I got screwed. This is Lisa Kudrow. That's a given. I feel like the hair is Ewan McGregor. But it's... No, no, no. I, oh. I'm going Ewan McGregor, but I feel like Ewan McGregor's hair is a little lighter and he's a little older. Ah! <laughs> oh, we're so back. Founded in Colorado in 1977 with an initial, initial focus on soy products, this brand of dairy substitute products is known, known for their, I can't read, their soy milk, almond milk, cashew milk, and oat creamers. It's uh, silk. It must be silk the most famous brand of milk alternatives. Set in the, oh, the brother, Gary Shandling, Jeffrey Tambor, Rip Torn, is the motherfucking Larry Sanders show. One of the least appreciated comedy goats of all time. Everybody knows Curb Your Enthusiasm, Seinfeld, Arrested Development. Fucking nobody talks about the Larry Sanders show anymore, bro. Nobody talks about Hank's Big Night. It's an amazing show. Do they have it on HBO Max? I don't know. Mr. Show? Mr. Show's good. They do? I gotta, I gotta watch through that again. Back in my day, they just had that shit on Google Video. There was a, a beautiful period from 2008 to about 2012 where like there was no copyright control on Google Video at all. You could just go to Google Video and type in like literally anything and it was there. You know what's crazy is now it's like the same, but it's the fucking original rights holders that are posting it. Okay. 2009 Wes Anderson stop motion, Fantastic Mr. Fox. You know, I was thinking, and I say this from a place of love because this was me. 
Being like a 19-year-old movie snob is a really hard position to be in. I remember in college, you know, you start to be a, a bit of a movie snob. People are like, what are your four favorite movies? You're like, that's easy. Jules A. Jim, probably Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. I got to say Battleship Potemkin. And then mm, Spider-Man 2. Like you're just like, you, you know the right answers, but then like you haven't had enough like adult life experience to round out. Like you're just repeating the answers that you think are going to be good. And then like one, they actually tickled your heartstrings, right? I'm not mad about it. It's just, it's, I'm sure we're going through the same thing right now. People are like, what's your favorite movie of all time? Mm, I got to say The Godfather Part 2. Um, in Bruges, um, the 400 blows. And I got to say, no, 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 probably number four would be across the spider verse or something like that. Or Madam Web. So true. Madam Web. In 2019, this singer had two breakout top five hits. Good as hell. And the number one hit song, Truth Hurts. This is Lizzo, Right. Why do I not know um, those songs? But I know Lizzo. I know my, my bedtime anthem. Turn off the music. Turn down the lights. I've got a feeling I'm going to sleep all right. Okay. It's about bedtime. Um, you know Truth Hurts? Is that the one where she says, I did the work. It didn't work. Or is that the one where she says, it's bad bitch o'clock, it's thick 30. That's all about damn time. Okay, my mistake. <laughs> it's all the same song. All right, my mistake. I'm sure I've heard it on the Peloton, man. Connections! Moccasin, a slipper, mm, maybe not. Boa, mamba, adder. Hmm, herm, jab, elbow, prod, and poke. Jab or stick, jab, stick, poke, and prod to be thrusted upon. Just thinking, just thinking. Pumpkin, moccasin, boa, mamba, adder, and the fucking pumpkin snake, bro. <laughs> Elbow, bow tie, that's a trick. Wheel, wheel of fortune, elbow of fortune, prince of fortune. Hmm. Hmm. Am I crazy? I feel like I'm crazy. Black mamba, a snake. Black ball, to have someone... To betray someone, essentially. Have them ostracized from a group. Black Adder? Fucking BBC7 comedy program? Like, but then... I don't know. I don't know if I'm maybe going a little bit insane, to be honest with you. Elbow drop. Elbow drop. Ball drop. <laughs> like on New Year's. I don't know. What about types of uh, like joints? Elbow joint, fucking ball joint, tube joint, <laughs> wheel joint, pumpkin patch, wheel patch, ball patch, 
basketball, basket pumpkin, slipper, two consonants in a row, ball, slipper, moccasin, and adder. It's never that. Prince. 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 I, it's got, there's got to be a snake in here, man. Elbow snake? Is tube snake? That sounds right. Tube snake? <laughs> One away. Ball snake? <laughs> Pumpkin snake? Shit you wear on your feet. Slipper. Moccasin. I'm washed. I'm washed, bro. I actually have no idea. Things that roll. Wheel. Ball. Pumpkin. Things you wear on your neck. Bow tie, boa. Wheel, tube, ball. Parts of a cat's toy. I think it's my best shot, lads. Ball snake. Slipper snake. Elbow snake. Prince snake. Ball snake. I gotta own this one. They own me. Moccasin snake seen in Cinderella. Oh, pasta shapes. Pasta shapes. I could have gotten pasta shapes. No problem. There's no such thing as a tube, uh, a tube snake. <laughs> that was a bad one. How do you not get Cinderella when you have a daughter? Honestly, it's extremely, like, fucking antiquated gender roles, bro. Maybe my daughter's favorite Disney movie is Hercules. Fucking boomer. Plus, half the time we're watching these Disney movies, I'm just looking at my phone, to be honest with you. Hey, Rex Mechanica, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I will not be creating a free account to do the mini crossword. <clears throat> Barrister or barista? Interesting. A lawyer or a coffee person? Hey, biblical betrayer? Judas. Difficult college chemistry class or go. Job later. Bye. Capture a checkers piece. Take. Singer in the greatest love story never told. Amy. <laughs> this does. Oh, J Lo. J Lo. J Lo. Judge. Response to a hilarious text. Lamau. Jump! Jump! There we go. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's a little bit of a slow mini for me today, without a doubt, but um, I've never said jump in, uh, in checkers. First off, I don't play checkers because I'm not eight. I say take. Strands is fun today. I don't know why Strands has shooters, man. Aren't all you guys supposed to be playing Slice and Dice right now? Melville Salted Caramel Marshmallow Mug Toppers 9 ounce. Enjoy as a perfect hot cocoa topper or a delicious snack. <coughs> salted caramel 12 
marshmallow mug toppers. I'll tell you one thing. There's no way that you're paying more than 79 cents per topper for this. Which for 12 takes you to about 10 bucks. But I think you're going even lower. I think this is like a 6.99, Andy. Okay, 7.49. I mean, I'm not paying a lick over 7.50. I'll tell you that. Okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll pay 7.99. Mm, I'll tell you what. Maybe I'll pay 8.49. Tell you what. Maybe I'll pay 8.99. But that's the limit. I'm not going over 8.99. I should have known. You know, for stuff like this where there's low demand, the price goes up. Because nobody's going there and they're like, oh, every week I'm getting 12 marshmallow mug toppers. That's, that's just not happening. Hey, Aki Wu, thanks for the raid. Don't look at the screen. Close your eyes if you're a raider. How much would you pay in US dollars for 12 marshmallow mug toppers? Info, they are salted caramel flavor. $8.99? Holy cow. Well, that's, you know what? It's you that's making it cost $8.99. Couldn't you have said like $2.50 and then they might have lowered the price a little bit? Well, you guys are so eager to pay market price for some shit so that they never lower the price. And then in two years, you're like, what the hell? A loaf of bread cost $12. Because of the bread that you was hanging with. Heard they got your mans. Heard they got your mans on cost of living expenses. The boy that you was hanging with. Guy that just bought a $140,000 truck talking about inflation. You, didn't, you don't feel no guilt, no remorse, no nothing. The bread prices were actually a, an oligop, oli, oligopoly. It's actually true. Don't even talk to me about the bread prices. They, no joke. They brought, um, they, they made a Law and Order spinoff in Canada, Law and Order Toronto. I saw an ad on TV. One of the episodes is about the Loblaws and President's Choice bread price fixing. <laughs> that's, that's where we're at in Canada. In the U.S., it's like, you know, murder. Well, listen, in the show, I think there was like a murder because of the bread pricing stuff. I don't know if that's actually something that happened in real life, but yeah, yeah. So if, for those unaware, for like 10 years, um, all of the grocery conglomerates in Canada conspired together to artificially raise the price of bread, like to... You know, they're supposed to be in competition with one another. So in theory, they should offer the bread for like the lowest price that also guarantees that they can generate a price. It's a little simplified, but you get the idea. They said, what if we stop competing and we all just like raise the price of our bread like two bucks because they have no other choices. Um, and then there was like a big class action lawsuit and stuff like that. And they got found guilty and every Canadian got a, I don't want to be libelous here. $25 grocery gift card. I think it was a $25 gift certificate to the grocery store that bent you over in the first place. Pretty sick. Anyway, we live in a sick world. <laughs> That's why I only buy bagels. Sidestep the whole quandary. You know what? How about Canada? It's not that far away. 3,000 kilometers from Canada honestly kind of narrows it down. How about Cuba? That's colder. Uh, how about uh, fucking Russia? That's warmer. See, I just, I, I could not tell you how long this distance is. I couldn't tell you, but I would tell you that Russia to Norway is not going to be 1,500 kilometers. Maybe, maybe this motherfucker, that's not Japan. Don't be an idiot. Canada is not 3,000, unless it is 3,000 kilometers from Japan. <laughs> but that Japan is not 1,500 kilometers from Russia, bro. How about if you fly over Greenland? 
you. To the Netherlands. That's adjacent to the answer. Motherfucking Belgium, bro. It's Belgium. I honestly, this, I, the Northern Pole is undefeated. I would have thought, if you had asked me how far is Belgium from the eastern tip of Newfoundland, I would have been like, I don't know, 9,000 kilometers. But if you fucking go from the tip of Ellesmere Island over Greenland and wave the Santa Claus on the way, shit is like right there, man. Three, I mean, it's 3,500 kilometers away, but still. That's crazy. That's wild. Spheres are crazy. I, everybody goes off on fucking Mercator, bro. Like, he did the best he could. He turned a sphere into a rectangle. And everybody's like, oh, it distorts the image. Of course he distorts the image, motherfucker. It came for free with your fucking projection. I'm not saying there weren't ulterior motives. I'm just saying, like, he, he's literally doing, like, geometric alchemy can you cut him a little bit of slack i don't know what all his personal opinions were in fucking 1803 or whatever but still this shit is washington bro that's not a country it's a state it's the Puget Sound right there. <clears throat> I feel like maybe you're like the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I'm going to have to say you're Angola. Oh, yes! <coughs> Holy! I only know like five countries that I can pull off the top of my head that are on the west, the southwestern coast of Africa. Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe. Am I going to count South Africa? I guess I'm going to count South Africa. Mozambique is in the southeast. Fucking Cameroon, maybe? Cameroon? Namibia, where the Great Plains begin. December 17th, 2004. I am getting ready for fucking Christmas in the, in the, in the 11th grade. Christmas 11th grade. Okay. A Paramount Pictures film that opened to $30 million starring Emily Browning. This is Lemony Snicket. I'm in the fucking headspace. I drank the water of life. Warner Brothers movie fell 54% week two pre-Batman Begins. Starring George Clooney. From 2004, George Clooney. Not well liked at the box office. We could easily say that this is Ocean's 12. We'll hold on that one. Sony Pictures opens to $8 million. Uh, I was going to say Garden State, but that's a summer John. And it's Focus Features, not Sony Pictures. So let's take a look here, okay? Starring Adam Sandler, December 17th, 2004. <clears throat> this is Punch Drunk Love. No, Punch Drunk Love was like 2001. It's tough. It's like Spanglish. Because it fucking tanked at the box office. That's Spanglish, bitch. Better recognize. Okay. Warner Brothers. Insane legs at the box office. Week 6 is down 12%. Starring Tom Hanks. There's no choice. This bitch has to be the terminal. No! <laughs> oh, it's got to be the motherfucking Polar Express, dog. What are you talking about, the terminal? Get out of here with that. Okay. New Line Cinema. 58% down week two, total gross 35 million, starring Wesley Snipes from 2004? Tagline, 
The final, oh, it's Blade Trinity. Of course it's Blade Trinity. Still, a 92nd percentile. We'll take those, bro. We'll take those. That was a big one. Score 940. Hi, Domo. I'm very proud of the, uh, the Spanglish pull. You gotta, I had to search the Sandler database there. Because I know you, your ass was probably saying like anger management. Anger management is not going to open to $8 million, bro. This is the height of Sandler's popularity. That shit probably opened PG-13 comedy when Sandler was popping. Probably opened to $35, $40 million. You're going to tell me that fucking $8 million opening weekend if you lost your mind? It had to be when he was trying to be a serious actor, but Punch Drunk Love was too early and Rain Over Me is too late. That only leaves Spanglish, bro. Anyway. <laughs> Why is he yapping? Because I'm bragging. Movie to movie. Anger management, $42.2 million opening week. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Okay, this is tough. Citizen Kane to the deer hunter. So we're going to go Ors Orson Welles, Yodorowsky's Dune. Let me think about this for a second. How is this tough? I don't know, because I'm not fucking... Familiar with Agnes Moorhead and Erskine Sanford and fucking Fortunio Bonanova? Because literally all these people involved in this production lived a whole ass rich fucking life before I even stepped foot on God's green earth. That's why it's a little bit tough. So we're going to, we have to find an Orson Welles movie that is not a uh, documentary about his life, because that's just simply not fair. So I got to figure out, when did Orson Welles die? He definitely feels like he was still alive at this point. Okay, you can go Brazil, and now I can start to think, okay, because Brazil, that's a different Brazil. That's not the Brazil I was thinking of. Can I go back to Orson Welles, please? I'm in Brazil. I thought that was going to be the Terry Gilliam movie. That's my mistake. I'll tell you what. Take me to History of the World Part 1. And now we can start to talk, okay? I want to get to Christopher Walken. It's so doable. Madeline Kahn, Clue. Hold, hold on this one for a second. Tim Curry, Scary Movie 2. David Cross, Run, Ronnie, Run. Bob Odenkirk, The Post. Let me get there first. Madeline Kahn, Clue. Tim Curry, Scary Movie 2. David Cross. Run, Ronnie, Run. Bob Odenkirk. The post. Okay, we hold on the post for a second. There's no shot Meryl Streep and Christopher Walken weren't in a movie together. But I don't know it, and thus I have to find it. We can also use Robert De Niro, which should be easy. All you have to do is get to Bradley Cooper, which is so doable. So doable. Lots, lots of known quantities here, no doubt about it. I'm just thinking for a second. I'm just thinking. You got me, it's almost like there's too much choice on this one. I'm th okay, give me Zach Woods, Downhill, Will Ferrell. 
Get hard too. No, no, daddy's home too. I mean, Zach Woods, downhill. Will Farrell. Take me to Anchorman. Anchorman gets you to... It's so, it's so easy, actually. Get me to Paul Giamatti. It's that simple. Get, if you give me... Get Zach Woods, downhill. Will Farrell. Will Farrell's like Frank's Red Hot Sauce. They put that in everything. We're going to go... Robert De Niro. He's been in a lot of pictures. We're going to go Holmes and Watson, John C. Riley, Magnolia for the Ensemble cast. And at this point, it's like so easy, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, that's how easy it is. We go Julie, uh, Julianne Moore, Hannibal, Ray Liotta, Goodfellas, Robert De Niro, The Deer Hunter. Julianne Moore, Hannibal, Ray Liotta, Goodfellas, Robert De Niro, The Deer Hunter. It's that, it's uh, time, time. <laughs> It's not that bad. Shortest possible was two. Oh, yeah, yeah. AFI Life Achievement Award, 50th. Oh, Meryl Streep's in The Deer Hunter. <laughs> I got to see that movie because honestly, people love to talk about The Deer Hunter. It shows up in Cine 2 Nerdle Battles all the time. It shows up in Movie to Movie all the time. It's really good. Yeah, how many fucking huge ass sandworms are in it? How many Bene Gesserit fetuses get dipped in Mama Liz's water of life oil? Zero? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's fucking bloodborne, bro. I know you can't see it yet. Mm, actually, I think this might be. Red Dead Redemption 1. If it's not Red Dead Redemption 1 or fucking, okay, maybe it, Metacritic score of 70, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is not Bloodborne or Red Dead Redemption. This is probably Amnesia 2, A Machine for Pigs. Okay, it's from the right generation. Is this Assassin's Creed Syndicate? The British one. No. Puzzle, action, puzzle, element, stuff. Am I crazy to think that this is, um, oh, um, Beyond Two Souls? No, it, was, it, it didn't have this kind of like Baroque aesthetic to it. Is it the Thief remake? It is the Thief remake. How about that? View source image, that's fine, I'm good. <laughs> Bad thief game, yeah. Crazy to think it's 10 years old. It wasn't a remake? Okay, well like the levels were different, but like, let's be honest, they called that shit thief. Reboot. We love to see a reboot fail, don't we, people? We do. We do. Gamedle Classic. I'm going to say this looks like some Mario shit, but I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to go back on that. This does not look like Mario. This is a, a white pant with a white boot and a monster's head is getting stepped on. This is Mad World. This is, it's Blood Bowl, bro. They don't even have it. 
Orcs Must Die 3. This looks nothing like Orcs Must Die. This is, uh, this is some Warhammer shit, 100%. It's probably Space Marine. Space Marine, there you go. You got to admit, this looks like some Mario shit when you just look at the boot. You know, I haven't played Super Mario Galaxy, but like he, he's wearing the white suit with the white top hat. If you crop this part out, that's Mario's boot, bro. Three question marks? That's Odyssey? What did I say? Galaxy? I was wrong twice then because I have played Super Mario Galaxy. And I don't want to brag, but I, I beat that shit. Not a lot of people can say that. I'm literally looking at nothing. Silent Hill 3. F uh, fucking, uh, fucking, fucking Fatal Frame 2, Crimson Butterfly. Fucking Fatal Frame 1. I'm a genius! I'm a fucking genius, bro! Is the original content warning games where you take pictures of ghosts? What is it, brother? <laughs> How do you know Fatal Frame? I was fucking subscribed to all the magazines back in the day. And by all, I mean literally official PlayStation magazine. And then like for two years at EB Games, if you had an EB Edge card, you got a subscription to the magazine GMR, which I don't know if that one actually, um, I don't know if that became Game Informer or if Game Informer already existed and then later got bought by GameStop or whatever. But I was in the, the GMR days, man. I mean, it was crazy. I don't even want to... The, the deal... I'm not saying you have to hand it to him, but it was crazy. I think the Edge card was like $10 a year or something like that. And you got a magazine subscription and 10% off. Well, that doesn't sound right. Maybe it was like $30 a year. You got, a, you got 12 issues of a magazine sent to your fucking house. And then 10% off all used games purchases for a whole year. Like, it was insane, man. Hey, Valentine, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. How could this possibly be profitable for EB Games? Tomo, you got to chill, man. You got to relax. It's just too much. You're, you're doing too much with it, man. Okay. It's a first and third person game that's single player only from later than 2001. This is actually a crazy poll. It's probably a PlayStation 3 game. Like Killzone 3. No, okay, it's not a play, which means it was Xbox or PS2. Not a shooter. <coughs> Pardon me. Has elements of science fiction, warfare, and action. Interesting. How about, like, brute force, bro? They don't even have it. That's, that's slanderous. How about Sniper Ghost Warrior? How about... How about Panzer Dragoon Orta? They don't have it, bro? They don't have any of the classics? Okay, how about fucking Suikoden 3? They don't have it. They don't, they don't have any Kino in this game. They forgot to add the Kino, bro. Okay, okay. Dark Cloud 2. It is from 2002. There are role-playing elements. It wasn't on the PS2 or the PS4. So it's, it's got to be like an Xbox game. First and third person Xbox One game. Single player only. I.E. no Halo. This is like launch title. It's fucking Blinks. 
the time is they don't have it bro it's 99 nights they don't they don't have it you get grabbed by the ghoulies in this bitch they don't they don't have any games they don't if they don't have any games what are you supposed to do they don't have any fucking games in this what can you say Let's pick a game developed by Microsoft to see if Microsoft made the game. Age of Empires. Microsoft was not involved in the production of the game. Let's name an RPG. Fable. It is a, a role-playing adventure game that is in the Gamebryo engine. Can I have a hint, please? It's a fantasy sandbox open world action game. It's, um, um, it's the Elder Scrolls Three, Morrowind. It is the Elder Scrolls, this shit was not, <coughs> pardon me. This shit was not multi-platform? It was only on the Xbox and the PC? I guess that's multiple platforms now that I think about it, but... Best Elder Scrolls? Uh, what's the, which Elder Scrolls is the one that has the famous clip where um, the dude gets into dialogue while the NPC is standing on the elevator that sends him up to the spikes? And then when he ends the dialogue, the elevator kills him. And then it comes down with his corpse. And then his friend goes like, oh, look at this loot. And stands on the elevator. And then it sends him up and kills him again. That's oblivion. He does it. May you rest in peace. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's an all-time clip without a doubt. Two word science fiction animation film from 2002. It's an hour and 35 minutes long. The Animatrix. This is Disney animation at its best. A witty and swashbuckling tale of adventure. Treasure Planet. It's just that easy. <laughs> You don't, swashbuckling is something that you don't see outside of like a pirate context. Goated movie? Okay, okay, let's do it. Favorite movies? I'm going to have to say Kramer versus Kramer, The French Connection, The Deer Hunter, and mm, number four, I'd say Treasure Planet probably. We're all guilty of it to some extent. I'm not trying to say that I'm immune to it either. Morgan Freeman begins with the. Sandra Bullock, Gary Oldman, three or more word title. Okay, easy. <coughs> I apologize. I've got a little postbacterial cough that's driving me crazy. It's probably the damn popcorn lung. I knew the lemon pound cakes were going to get me one day. Morgan Freeman, three or more word title. War of the Worlds. Insane pull. Insane pull. He does the voice narration at the end of the movie. Morgan Freeman, $100 million box office run. That's a gimme. We go red. Retired, elite, dangerous. Morgan Freeman begins with the... Shawshank Redemption is going to be number one. So I'm going to say bucket list. Because I can't think of a deep pull. I'll, I'll settle for 20%. Least cooked movie poster of all time. <laughs> Sandra Bullock begins with the. First, three or more word title. I got to say Miss Congeniality too. Armed and Fabulous. That hurts. $100 million plus box office run. 
The, the net. That's a big Sandra Bullock pull that is not the blind side. $100 million plus box office run. There's always Miss Congeniality 1. That was, they made a sequel, bro. It must have made $100 million. I honestly would have, like my other pick was going to be like Speed or Crash. I think those are, those are going to be the top guess. IMO. Gary Oldman begins with the. The Professional, colon, Leon. Three or more word title. It's tough because I want to say that this is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. But, no, no, no. Rosencrantz and motherfucking Gildernstern are dead, bitch. Let's go. Then, you got lots to play with. $100 million plus box office run. The Darkest it begins with the. I want to say that you go The Darkest Hour for the, even though it's a well-known film, obviously. That's not what it's called. What the fuck is it called, bro? It's called Darkest Hour. Oh, my God. Hi, Tom Mall. All right. Well, how about fucking Batman Begins? Take one of those and call me in the morning. He do be saying meow. No doubt about that. <clears throat> Top 50% of players today. The exact median. I'm a little pissed that we top-ticked Miss Congeniality 2, Armed and Fabulous. I thought I was really smart for that one. We still did okay. Is Tomo in heat? He's just fucking... First off, no. We took care of that shit like nine years ago or something. Secondly, he's just, he's just unruly. It's just in his nature. Is actually like no disrespect. I never want to own a female cat. I had two female cats when I was a kid. When they go through heat, this shit is fucking irritating, bro. They find like the most echoey place in the in the house. 2 a.m. They go to like the stairwell and just go. Spay them. Okay, motherfucker. I was nine. I wasn't in charge of those kind of decisions at that age. Shame in my nine-year-old ass. Your ass was probably like negative 17 at the time. Didn't stop you from thinking you had all the answers. You are now? Yeah. And I'm, my choice is not to own a female cat. I don't want to go through that shit. I don't have a female cat now. I got Tomo and Ruka. And they're straight chilling. Name four female cats. <clears throat> okay. Um, Abraham DeLacy, Giuseppe Casey, Thomas O'Malley, O'Malley the Alley Cat, and then Josie from Josie and the Pussycats. Twisty. A noun meaning an act of twisting, the state of being twisty. Got me feeling twisty. Talent. A noun mean A noun meaning Billy. Dumplings. A noun meaning a small mass of dough cooked by Can I tell you a story by the way? When we were in Washington this weekend, we went to a Korean barbecue restaurant that was all you can eat. I'm not gonna talk the the, the value proposition of the restaurant was good. Forty five dollars US, pretty expensive. All you can eat Korean barbecue meat plus sides. You're, you're coming out 
pretty good. That's a fair price for a fair meal. Here's where things went wrong. It came around for the first order, okay? My wife said, can we get one order of galbi, one order of beef tongue, and one order of brisket? They said, no problem. Came back two minutes later, just the galbi. Threw it down on the table. They said, do you want anything else? My wife said, I just want to make sure that the one beef tongue and one brisket is coming. And the dude looked kind of confused and he wrote it down. Fucking three minutes later, bro came back with three plates of brisket, three plates of beef tongue. Not, not, not one, which we ordered. Not two, which would have made sense. But three, which I, I could only take as like he's trying to punish us or something like that. Now we fucked up. We should have said, sorry, we only wanted one of these. But like we were like, oh, whatever. It's all you can eat. No big deal. We fucking ate it all and felt too fucking full. I was so full. My body sent like an emergency protocol to my colon and evacuated my bowels in the restaurant bathroom. Like that's how full I went. It sent a, a downstream message that was like, make room, because like, this ain't a joke, bro. Dude probably ate like 3,500 calories of meat and oil and salt. That, this restaurant, I honestly am like, it's not really their fault, but I'm like, I, it's one of the only restaurants I've ever eaten at where I was like, I think if you ate here every day for two years, you would die. And I stand by the fact, I think you could eat at any restaurant on the planet for two years straight and not die. This is the one exception. They, they, people were doing obscene things to fit more meat in their body. It's too much, man. The heart attack grill. Okay, the heart attack. Well, I don't know because the heart attack grill, like I know it sounds crazy. At least there's like fucking buns and potatoes and shit. This was just beef, man. Your body doesn't get a break. It's just nonstop flesh. The West. A ad the West. A adverb meaning to, toward, or in the West. This word originated from Old English and was later adopted into Middle English. West? The West. A adverb meaning to, toward. Okay. Raz. A noun meaning raspberry. Raspberry, a sound of contempt, is derived from an alteration of raspberry. I almost lost on an easy one. I mean, that raz is not a word as far as I'm concerned, but we go next. A rain. A verb meaning to call a def... Huge. Waddles. A noun meaning... What? Play it again, man. A duck waddles. What else could it have been? Irascible. A adjective meaning marked... Eerily. A adverb meaning in a... I will not be washed. Two, two is all they get. Two is all they get. Ombudsman. A noun meaning a person who invents. Easy. Use it every day. Cloisters. A noun meaning a monastic. Pokemon fans when they get an X on that one. <gasps> Diaphoresis. A noun meaning perspiration, especially profuse perspiration. Suck me. Diaphoresis, bitch. You thought you were going to trip me up on diaphoresis? Guarnarius. A noun meaning a violin made by one of the Italian Guarneri family in the Sorry, 17th and 18th what? centuries. Guarneri is an Italian name that was later adopted into New Latin. Guarnerius. A noun meaning a violin made by one of the Italian Guarneri family in the 17th and 18th centuries. Guarneri is an Italian name that was later adopted into New Latin. Guarnerius. <clears throat> a noun meaning a violin made by one of the Italian Guarneri family. No shot, bro. No shot. Guarnarius. Isles, a noun meaning a passage, as in a theater or railroad passenger car. Is it hard words? Bauxite, a noun meaning an impure mix. That's not how you spell bauxite? I gotta make a call real quick. Oh, box A-U. This is a hard spell check, bro. Two R's in erasable. Wad, don't even talk to me about waddles. We produce watts, not waddles. You got to take waddles to the Peloton subcommunity and ask, what is that, like one eighth of a watt or something like that? We don't do that here. <clears throat> yeah.
embarrassing. Food guesser. It's, bad. it's nice to be back with the dolls, man. This shit looks Thai as fuck. Pork belly, tofu, bitter melon, carrots, eggs, cabbage, bean sprouts, green onions, salt, pepper, soy sauce. No fish sauce, huh? But this shit with the, the cucumber being cut like that and the bean sprouts. This, this looks like Thai Cambodian to me personally. I, I, gotta, I gotta follow my gut and say Thailand. That's cool. We're not even in the right fucking ballpark, bro. We need to be to the northeast of that. China? China? That's warmer. Japan? Chonpuru. Oh, it's from Okinawa, bro. That's not fair. That's tough. That's like uh, Japan mixed with America mixed with Hawaii. Like, that's, that's tricky. It looks good. Um, don't get me wrong. I would eat it for sure. I'm a simple man. I will eat any Asian food where the fucking vegetables are sliced at a bias. Especially, you ever, you ever get like a Thai curry? How do they do the cucumber like that, bro? The cucumber is so slight, like every slice of cucumber is like two inches long. And then the edges are serrated like a crinkle cut French fry. It's a mandolin. Oh. With a guarnarian sort of uh, lilt to it. Water, turmeric, garlic, tamarind, chili peppers, shrimp paste, and lemongrass. Let me look at photo number two here. I mean, served on the injera, that looks like Ethiopia to me. Can't trick me. The second picture saved my life. What? <laughs> what is a traditional Ethiopian and Eritrean stew? Okay. What can I say? This looks like ratatouille, bro. This is ratatouille, bro. That shit is rat. Worst photo of all time. Fire the cameraman. Remove the cameraman's camera from his hands. What is this picture? Is this shit shot like a fucking... It's shot so damn close and low. What is this, man? And the chef, too. I'm not going to hate on them for that. But see that? that and actually, this is cooked, too. <coughs> Obviously, why is this shit... Like it's black and white, but then the food's in color. What are you? You're doing too much, man. <clears throat> As red uh, is France. Sorry, it's from the nation of France. Sorry, Steph Forty Eight. I didn't mean to insult you. I'm just gonna say there's a reason this is in the public domain. Gastronomical genius. Average score: ten thousand seven hundred ninety-six. What can I say? What can I say? Okinawa kind of cooked me a little bit, though. Never been. Guess the movie by the cast. Okay. <clears throat> this one's tough. We got Issa Rae and Rafe Fiennes. I have, a, I have absolutely no idea. It's not going to be the menu, but at least it's a guess that won't get you laughed off the planet. It's got Leia Sedu, Issa Rae, and Rafe Fiennes. This is uh, Spectre, the James Bond film. Rami Malek. This is No Time to Die, not Spectre. It is indeed No Time to Die. What'd they do with the motherfucking Daniel Craig's photo, bro? He's, he's missing half his chin. He's got another, he's got a whole rest of his body, man. No time to chin. So true. Ralph's missing half his hair. 
I mean, he's just, he's got it cropped quite short. Do you have a problem? Bald is a style. Here we go, okay. This is tough. Vulture doesn't mess around. Oscar nominated best picture, character name in title, Milk. 2%. It, could, it doesn't get any more art imitates life than that. 2% milk, baby. Let's go. Anne Hathaway, character name in title. <clears throat> I'm thinking. Johnny Depp, character name in title. That one's easy. Mordecai. This poster is haunting my dreams, man. Get a load of this guy. Hans Zimmer. There's no shot Hans Zimmer didn't do Pirates of the Caribbean 3. At World's End. That's a guarantee. Hans Zimmer and Hathaway. I'm going to take the easy way out. No question, this is Interstellar. Hans Zimmer, Oscar nominated for Best Picture. I got to go Inception on that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not fully familiar with the intimate works of Zimmer. <coughs> I take some of the easy ones. Helena Bonham Carter, Johnny Depp. Mm, okay, we'll go um, any Tim Burton movie for that, but you really want to make sure you don't mess it up now that you've said it. I'm going to say Alice in Wonderland. It's going to be 92%, but we take those. 12%? Am I silly? Did I smooth brain into a good answer? Because everybody else was like, don't say Alice in Wonderland. It's too obvious. That, that feels great. Usually you're punished for dumbness. Helena Bonham Carter, nominated for Best Picture. <clears throat> it's not true. It's never happened. It's not... No, no, the King's Speech. Sorry, my mistake. I was not familiar with your game. Helena Bonham Carter and Anne Hathaway. Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries 2. Les Miserables is the, is the closest thing I can come to to a, a, a good guess here. I didn't know Helena Bonham Carter was in that, but we'll take those. Anne Hathaway, character name in title. Fucking Ocean's 8, bro. That's his, his name is Danny Ocean. Maybe her name is like freaking Billy Ocean or something. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Caribbean queen, now we're sharing the same dream. Top 7% is pretty good. I don't even know what this is. Arm? Rach Rachel getting married? Is that what it says? It is indeed. Sweeney Todd, 61%. How does it feel to be just smart enough to lose to the dumb people? That's got a sting. Me typing Miss Congeniality too. Armed and fabulous and seeing 34% pop up. Oh, brother. <laughs> I think that's good for the, the day. You know what? Maybe I'll, I'll strands you. Strands in the place where you are. Now, word search. Think about the words and where you find them in New York Times. Strands in the... Rolling in the aisles. Okay? Easy. Cake. Hmm. Hmm. Robed. Hmm. Prod. A hint. Meats. Whoops. Meats, of course. How about fucking fruit? Fruits and something you would find in the aisles. How about fucking produce? 
Pro do produce. How about fucking food? What? <laughs> it's got seafood. <laughs> seafood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's got to be Borg or grocery. 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 What? Groceries. See, that's pissing me off. It's, it's, it's IES. It's an IES, but whatever. No problem. No problem. Dairy. Hmm. Store. Frozen. Grocery. I, I've put the two and two together. Grocery store. They were cooking on this Spangram, bro. Bakery. We get that was one hint is really good, man. <clears throat> one hint is really good. Why doesn't anybody have it a, have a problem with? strands but they have a problem with connections like in connections they're always like oh this one thing can be in two different categories and then like in strands nobody's ever like well robed is a word i feel like it should count oh because you can't lose that's right that makes sense <laughs> 